All right. I've had a <sighs> unnecessarily complicated day. Um, a bunch of stuff that's positive happened, but also some negative, and <laughs> I had to deal with blowback during the first half of the day, and then the last part of the day finished with me fucking listening to <laughs> uh, Libertarian Party bullshit. I, I kind of resisted the thought at first but then i i couldn't really help myself but to see the shit show for an executive meeting related to a bunch of drama allegedly people are locked out of accounts online that shouldn't be some other people allege that it's totally fine because like purges happened or whatever and uh and people in the party weren't following the guidelines closely enough I don't care just to be incredibly serious I don't care it doesn't matter to me because the libertarian party is not my organization and hasn't been for some time I started out my libertarian journey with the libertarian party um, just like so many other people did. I didn't like Democrats or Republicans, and I made that clear to my mother, who told me that maybe I should check out the Libertarian Party. So I did, and I liked their platform. I liked the stuff about ending wars, including the war on drugs. I liked the stuff about self-ownership and non-aggression. I liked it. It was fine. And then I got involved with the Gary Johnson bullshit for a grand total of, I think, two months. Because he's milk toast and stupid. Maybe he's done some good things in his, uh, his state as governor. Arguable. But maybe. I'm cynical. I believe personally that the only purpose of a libertarian in politics is to get people to be like okay with the system while it fucks them in the same way it always has. I'm fucking exhausted. I'm going to lean back a little. And I feel like one of the ways that the system does this is to get people to believe that because libertarians have a political process for change, that that means that that's the only way to be a libertarian now. I can't tell you how many times I have been told that I'm not a libertarian because I'm anarchist. And it should be embarrassing every single time for the accuser. Because they're fucking stupid. Libertarianism started as an anarchist thing with anarchists on the left. It persisted with anti-state people uh, on all walks of life as long as they're walking on the bottom strip. Lysander Spo Spooner was left. Benjamin Tucker was left. Um, Albert J. Nock was arguably more rightist. So was uh, Rose Wilder Lane, and Rothbard, and Mises. But they still fancied themselves anarchists. And the libertarian meaning meant we don't like government for the longest fucking time. Then the 70s roll around and suddenly there's a libertarian party. And that's where it started to go downhill. Because now you had a libertarian party which was basically controlling the public's perception of the libertarian message into the dirt. I think the most libertarian they got, uh, like, more historically speaking, was Ron Paul. 
anti-war, anti-war on drugs, anti-federal reserve, anti-taxation. He's got it all. And they fucked that up. I want to read you a segment here from the New Libertarian Manifesto. Back when libertarianism meant something closer uh, to anarchy. And I want to read you a segment about partyarchy. And that segment... <laughs> I feel like not enough people actually read this book. Especially since the last time I was in a massive conversation with a bunch of libertarians. One of them called him a loser. Even though he has done so much more for liberty than they have. So, I, I, I'm, I'm going to read this thing. The state's higher circles were not about to yield their plunder and restore property to their victims at the first sign of opposition. The first counterattack came from anti-principles already planted by the corrupt intellectual caste. Defeatism, retreatism, minarchy, collaborationism, gradualism, monocentrism, and reformism including accepting state office to improve statism. All of these anti-principles, deviations, heresies, self-destructive, contradictory tenets will be dealt with later. Worst of all is partyarchy, the anti-concept of pursuing libertarian ends through statist means, especially political parties. A libertarian party was a second counterattack of the state unleashed on the fledgling libertarians, first as a ludicrous oxymoron, then as an invading army. <laughs> the third counterattack was an attempt by one of the ten richest capitalists in the United States to buy the major libertarian institutions, not just the parties, and run the movement as other plutocrats run all the other political parties in capitalist states. The degree of the success those statist counterattacks had in corrupting libertarianism led to a splintering of the movement's left and the despairing paralyzation of others. As disillusionment grew with libertarianism, the disillusion sought answers to this new problem. The state with, within as well as the state without. How do we avoid being used by the state and its power elite? That is, they asked, how can we avoid deviations from the, this path of liberty when we know there are more than one? The market has many paths to production and consumption of a product, and none are perfectly predictable. So even if one tells us how to get from here to there, stages and to liberty, how do we know that's the best way? Already some are dredging up the old strategies of movements long dead with other goals. New paths are indeed being offered back to the state. Let me repeat that. New paths are indeed being offered back to the state. Betrayal, inadvertent or planned, continues. It need not. Hate to break it to you, but that dude's dead. And this was written quite a fuck time ago. Yet the problems he talked about still persist because people don't want to listen to anarchists. People think they're fine with the partyarchy. People think that's the way forward. How far forward have you gotten? Because I'd venture to say that if you're being fucking honest, you'd say you got two steps forward and one step back. Or maybe like 10 steps back or 20. The government is absolutely magnified in size by magnitudes over the past decades. Ever since the inception of the Libertarian Party, it's just fucking skyrocketed the amount of laws, the amount of technology, the power differential. It's just fucking skyrocketed and this is just the beginning 
and the libertarians get to quibble about their political party which doesn't win significant wins it doesn't mostly change things it probably won't and even if it does it'll change little tiny things that the presidency can get away with or that the tiny uh, groups of people who are involved in various caucuses that actually have some sort of action plan uh, those tiny groups will maybe see some success in their local areas as a whole the US government is not going to change because you voted for the change. Oh, I'm sorry. I ran this corrupt empire for forever. I, I started it based on slavery and a bloody and unnecessary war, and then a bunch of genocide and all this stuff and it was all based on the old, long-entrenched power of nepotism and inheritance to keep money in the hands of the people who were always going to use it for these purposes. But, ah, I've built all this empire. I have a hegemony that stretches across the world, and I am not going to just give that up. I am a powerful, industrial nation. We are the West. We are powerful. And you will never truly get rid of us. Oh. Oh, what are you doing? You wrote something down on those pieces of paper and there are a lot of them. Oh, no. What will I ever do? Am I gonna... Am I gonna have to give up power now? Now that so many people have put things into the computer systems and scribbled on some paper? Oh, what was me? I'm gonna get rid of all my power because I'm honorable. I'm just. The system worked and you worked the system. You gosh darn worked so gosh dang hard and we're gonna do everything we promised to and just dissolve the union, take our toys, go home, find another cluster of people to oppress or just stop oppressing people entirely we're done with it because you put enough down on pieces of paper and now now our bloody brutal empire which we made based on a long series of things that we entrenched for a long time and kept that way by any means necessary we will now give up because you Asked nicely. And we're nothing if not honest. So let, let's be magnanimous. Let's go forward to a libertarian future. And yeah, let bygones be bygones. We'll do that for you. We promise. You... You see how that's maybe a little bit of a fantasy land approach? Oh no, we're fine. No, you're really not. You're not going to give shit up. They're not going to give shit up. Donate to my campaign. Support my campaign. Spread my campaign. Donate to my campaign. Put this money in my campaign. Do this all for my campaign. Be my campaign. Politics. When people ask if libertarians would feed the poor, ask how much money went to a libertarian's campaign that could have gone to a food bank. When people ask, you know, if libertarians would take care of the sick, ask how much money went to a money bomb that could have gone to a hospital. When people ask, hey, what about the roads? Ask how much money went to a political ad to, to, to shame an opponent. To make it seem like they aren't 
woke enough or simultaneously are too woke, part of a socialist invasion, and not to filling potholes. If libertarians did direct action approaches like that, money bombed the fuck out of hospitals, roads, other aspects of infrastructure, helped the poor, helped the homeless, using the same money that they use for political means, for a likely largely futile set of political goals, we would be fucking loved. If instead of just complaining about cops shutting down, like, food banks, we opened up five for every one the cops scuttled, libertarians would have a great reputation. If instead of donating to a campaign, we sent that money to private investigators who specialized in catching predators. Libertarians could shake some of that. Hey, all y'all want to do is fuck kids sentiment. If we took enough direct action and proved that there are apolitical solutions, proved that if government was shrunk or gotten rid of, that we'd still be helping people, that we'd still have a functioning world, we would have such a better reputation. That isn't what happens. That ain't what happens at fucking all. Instead, we get multi-hour long fucking executive meetings where they're fucking quarreling about bylaws most of the time. Or where they have a public comment section where everybody's just repeating each other on different sides of the same issue. <laughs> It was fucking painful to watch. But I watched it. <laughs> and I tried not to die inside too much. Because I used to help that. I saw a thing in this video where a guy was saying that in order to be a member of the Libertarian Party... You should have to score a certain high enough score on the Nolan chart. For those of you who don't know, the Nolan chart is an incredibly retarded um, system of charting uh, libertarian positions because it basically has extremely outdated things that it talks about that basically people aren't even discussing anymore. And then some stuff that is sort of recognizable, but it's very short, and it really doesn't fucking tell you whether or not you're goddamn libertarian. Here's, here's how you can tell if you're a libertarian. This is the real shortest political quiz. Do you think you should be able to decide how other people live by our conic structures? Yes? Well, congratulations, you're either a slave or a slave master, and you're not libertarian. No, you're a libertarian. You want to be free. You don't think people should be able to aggressively impose their will on others. Fucking short. It's not a chart, it's a straight line. You a piece of shit, or are you a libertarian? But they won't do that. Because the truth is, a lot of people in the Libertarian Party actually fucking do want to rule over people. That's the reason I heard a comment tonight that said fucking libertarianism isn't a social club. It's, um, it's not about philosophy. It's a political party. Shove it up your ass, dude. If libertarianism loses its philosophical roots, then there is no point to having any libertarianism at all. There is no point. If libertarians are no longer philosophically sound, they are no longer libertarians. Because libertarianism 
is a philosophy. It holds that you are free, that you have free will and that you should be free to act on it, free from social and governmental constraints, at least in terms of, like, interpersonal action, you know? Like, you can tell somebody to get off your property, but <laughs> you can't tell them how to live. Not and be a libertarian. <laughs> You can't believe that they don't have free will. You can't be genetically determinist. So bigotry is bad. And you know, what's funny is that the Libertarian Party platform fucking says this too. Hmm? Let's read a little bit of that. Rights and Discrimination 3.5. Libertarians embrace the concept that all people are born with certain inherent rights. We reject the idea that a natural right can ever impose an obligation upon others to fulfill that right. That's talking about, like, government spending on that sort of thing, or bills or whatever. We condemn bigotry as irrational and repugnant. Ooh, that thing scares so many people. They don't like that line. Government should neither deny nor abridge any individual's human right based on sex, wealth, ethnicity, creed, age, national origin personal habits, political preference, or sexual orientation, members of private organizations retain their rights to set whatever standards of association they deem appropriate. And individuals are free to respond with ostracism, boycotts, and other free market solutions. Almost like I've been saying that for a long fucking time and constantly catching flack for it. Almost like I talk about ostracizing racists and other bigots regularly and constantly get shit on for it, even though it's what this party is supposed to stand for. But also, simultaneously, I've also seen a gradual uptick in democratic policies being labeled as libertarian so that they can form their own stupid little caucus or their own stupid little circle jerk. I, I saw this guy the other day, this well, the other month anyway. This was a bit ago. Uh, is that Alan Moyers, I think his name was? I don't fucking remember specifically. That's probably it. But uh, he had in his like banner that he that I am a libertarian and I believe in universal health care, universal basic income, and like, shit like that it's like no you're fucking not <laughs> you should read the goddamn platform or you should like realize that libertarianism isn't about political solutions to jive and shut the fuck up i used to help with these people i used to work with yao i used to try and push Things like the, the, the Thomas Massey slash Justin Amash approach to libertarianism before either of them were even like <laughs> come out and say it libertarians. Like I used to be in that cult. And ever since I've been free, I've been going ever increasingly more insane watching the existing members flounder around for their political solutions to maybe finally work and never do. Ooh, you got legal weed. Ooh, you might get legal shrooms. Ooh, there's some minority representation in government and minority representation in capability to fuck how you want. That's fine for people who are affected by that, but you know what we're all affected by? The slow grinding march of a gigantic facial recognition super state, which will control, track, and monitor us all. A dollar that is defaulting uh, at any moment now uh, so that they can push the Federal Reserve's new digital dollar, which will be yet more lack of privacy. Uh, we're getting presidents who are uh, right wing but uh, aren't called that by <laughs> significant chunks of people who call themselves the left because those presidents aren't Trump so anybody who's not Trump can be as fascist as they want because they're not Trump 
We've got hmm, so many fucking policies coming down the pike. We've still got the wall being built. We've still got every promise Biden made being broken. We've still got troops in Afghanistan. And even more, probably, because of all the fucking private contractors they can coo 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 over there because they've got all the fucking money in the world. We've got Biden with his new $6 trillion fucking new plan for spending. And this is going to increase the size of government dramatically. But we've got all this stuff. And somebody can light up a joint without being arrested. So it's all okay. Black Lives Matter says that there are more military police vehicles in the streets than ever. That they've heard increased reports of, in, like, well, reports of increased police brutality, misconduct, all that sort of thing. They say it's fucking worse under Biden and a whole bunch of police uh, advocacy organizations fucking agree with them. And it's like, huh, hmm, maybe it's not getting better. And maybe getting one more percent next election cycle in the libertarian movement, in the libertarian party movement specifically, which, <laughs> pretty anti-libertarian if you fucking ask me um that hasn't changed anything and it won't change anything in the future either it hasn't shrunk government government is huge government is bigger than ever government marches on because the people don't actually have the power to do magic with words inscribe the magic phrase on the paper or enter the magic com combination of incantations into the magic dais under the curtain and then come out emerge on the other side a powerful warlock who can defeat empires with a stroke of a pen that ain't real and i'm tired of people pretending it is I'm tired of getting flack when I bring this shit up. I know I will. I know this video is probably going to get downvoted to fuck. But I don't care. Because ultimately, this shit is obvious and simple and easy. But people would rather fucking throw their money at political campaigns than do anything for their community. If you complain about one of the ways that your community is fucked, and you're not donating to a direct aid institution, but you support the Daily Coast or the Blaze, shut the fuck up. If you support a political action committee, if you support a politician, if you give them your money, Instead of throwing it to that homeless guy who needs it in front of Walmart, fuck you. There are so many problems that could be handled if people would just stop engaging with the old system. Libertarians talk a big game about their wealth, about their ability to corner markets and solve everything on a market side solution demand side uber alice right well you're not filling in the demand instead you would rather your existing institutions continue to exist and be empowered you would rather see seek a state solution then seek an anti-state solution which might actually get rid of the fuckers. You've sacrificed your principles on the altar of partyarchy and it's gross as hell. And it all started in the 70s. Because let me <laughs> let me read this this nice little uh part of this. Um, the Libertarian Party, which eventually organized nationally and ran John Hospers and Tony Nathan, this is more from the New Libertarian Manifesto, for president and vice president in 72, was first organized by David and Susan Nolan in December of 1971 in Colorado. David Nolan, Nolan chart guy, was a Massachusetts uh, YAFer 
who had broken with YAF back in 1967 and missed the 1969 climax in St. Louis. <laughs> I love that phrasing. He remained conservative and minarchist right up to this first edition. Although the Nolans were rather innocent, and other early organizations and candidates often so, the debate on the Perry question began immediately. New Libertarian Notes attacked the uh, L. P concept in spring of 72 and ran a debate between Nolan and Konkin just before the election. By the 1980 presidential campaign, the Nolans had broken with the LP leadership of Ed Crane and his candidate, Ed Clark, who ran a high-powered, high-finance, traditional vote-chasing and platform-trimming campaign. Charles G. Cope, Wichita oil billionaire, through his relatives, foundations, institutes, and centers, bought or set up or bought out the following from 1976 to 79. Murray Rothbard and his Libertarian Forum, Libertarian Review from Robert Keppert, edited by Roy A. Childs, Students for a Libertarian Society, SLS, run by Milton Muller, Center for Libertarian Studies, Rothbard Leaning, and Joe Padden, Inquiry, edited by Williamson Evers, Cato Institute, and various, and, and various Koch funds, foundations, and institutes. Named the Cochtopus in New Libertarian 1, for February 1978, it was first attacked in print by Edith Efren in the conservative libertarian publication Reason, along with allegations of an anarchist conspiracy. The movement of the libertarian left cut away from Efren's anti-anarchist ravings and rushed to support her on her key revelation of the growth of monocentrism in the movement. In 1979, the Coctopus took control of the National Libertarian Party at the L.A. Convention. David Koch, Charles' brother, openly bought the VP nomination for $500,000. Murray Rothbard broke with the Coctopus after the 79 convention and cut off his close allies, or sorry, most of his close allies were purged, such as Williamson Evers of Inquiry. CLS was cut off from the Coke funding. The Libertarian Forum began attacking Coke. Rothbard and young Justin Raimondo set up a new radical caucus of the LP. Does this sound familiar? The first one. 1972 to 74 was run by progenitors of NLA as a recruiting tactic and to destroy the party from within. Although Rothbard was moved to ask, is Sam Konkin right? That's the author of the New Libertarian Manifesto. In his July 1980 speech to an RC dinner in Orange County, the RC strategy is to reform the LP using New Left and Neo Marxist tactics. I just feel like this has happened before. Like maybe this new fresh energy toward this highly right-wing supporting libertarian party has been tried before, maybe. Hmm? That maybe this gigantic push isn't the first time it's happened, and it won't be the first time it fails. It won't be the first time principles are sacrificed in the name of expediency, convenience, quick power. Where platforms are trimmed and shit is bought by people who already have money because they already support power. Oh, wait. That's already what happened. Because these institutions which are responsible for you know, all these student organizations, all these think tanks, all these things, they're already pretty much directly affiliated with Coke or one of the other billionaires that loves to fund conservatives. That's why you don't see leftists in their material. That's why you don't see anti-racism in their material. It's why you don't see any sort of minority protection system in their material because they don't actually support anybody but Republican or Republican-leaning libertarians. That's the truth. I think 
the actual people behind the Libertarian Party are probably best typified by Austin Peterson. And that sucks. The idea that people's introduction to libertarianism might be oafish people excusing terrible things because they want a bigger tent and they don't want to alienate the people who might bring those terrible things and their shit-ass audience over. Sacrificing principles. And why? For an unlikely to be seized piece of an ever shrinking pie of freedom. That's why. They don't actually support freedom. They don't need to. They never did. What they need is enough support from enough entrenched power that they can get away with continuing to take yours. And the Libertarian Party is a placebo so that they can continue the experiment to see how many freedoms they can take before anybody does anything. And it's kind of trending toward 100%. I am extremely pessimistic. I am a cynical asshole. I'm going to get a lot of hate for this video. I also don't give a fuck. Dude... I am so done. I listen to people say the same shit, essentially, that they've been saying ever since I was in high school. And it's sad. It's sad. And then, like, the more I research about the history of the libertarian movement, the more I realize that this is on repeat. It's on repeat. It's on repeat. It's on repeat. It's like that Bo Burnham song. It's repeat stuff. You gotta know the words after just one listen, right? Well, there are so many people who think it's a new song every time. Same old song and dance. Let me tell you what. Oh, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll sacrifice all our power. We promise. We promise. We promise. And they never break promises, right? They're just gonna give up. I get the kind of appeal of saying that, you know, well, hey, at least we tried the peaceful option. But how many times do you need to try that before you realize it's not going to fucking work? Look, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. I've made a lot of those mistakes more than once. I'm not perfect. I'm not trying to get up on some sort of pedestal and be perfect about everything. I got my warts and all. I just hope that people can learn from fucking history. Because it really seems like they can't. How could I sit through a multi-hour long thing like that and not hear a single anarchist solution from libertarians. Despite one of them having an anarchist necklace on her neck. Because none of this would be a problem. They wouldn't have to worry about who has what assets or data or whatever. If they weren't trying to run a politics party for what should be an anti-political mentality, philosophy, and direction. We should be moving away from politics, and then we wouldn't have to worry about this, because guess how property disputes are handled in Libertariastan? Not nicely. It ain't a fucking Zoom call. It's don't tread on me or fucking else. But hey, what do I know? I'm just the extremist who's too into Sonic. I'm, I'm the evil person who's always talking shit about good people. All of my, my uh, people that I've targeted, they're all perfect. They don't need my advice. Nobody does. I'm evil. I'm the villain. And I'm used to it. 
So I'm going to keep being the villain because what it means, ultimately, that is if you help this video and content like it by liking, sharing, and subscribing, is that eventually, maybe, I can get enough people on board, myself included, with a bright, brilliant new future that we can finally, not politically, but realistically, practically, and directly smash the fucking state.